So before we proceed, I will like for us to revisit Newton's first law one more time because this is such a fundamental law we are going to look at the consequences or the implications of this law so let me state the law again imagine a box which you will see on the screen at rest naturally and practically in the absence of any external influence, that box will stay at rest. Now, on the other hand, if we have a box that is moving on a frictionless, on a very smooth road, naturally we don't have that. But let's just say we have a box that is moving on a very smooth road that box will remain in motion unless an external influence acts on the box. Okay, these statements constitute what we call Newton's first law of motion. So the above law really can be broken down into two fundamental statements. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by an external force or an external influence. And the second statement would be an object in motion will continue with more will continue to be in motion in a particular direction unless acted upon by an external force. Now, for you to quickly see the second statement in action, imagine that you roll a bowling ball down an aisle. That bowling ball will continue to roll down that aisle until something stands on the way or pushes the bowling ball to change direction. Without an external influence, it will keep on rolling in that particular direction. Now, the reason it is a little difficult for us to observe or ex to observe the second statement is because naturally there is friction. Um, so if you roll a ball on a surface, it will eventually come to a stop because there is friction acting against the ball, which itself is a fulfillment of the second statement. Now, it is only in the physics classroom that you will see surfaces that are completely frictionless. They don't exist in nature. But the reason we do so in this class is just to simplify the concepts so that you could actually experiment or see what we are talking about. So here comes the important part. What does this law mean? Now, I would like for you to pay attention, um, particularly now, to understand the implication of this law because this is really so crucial. Um, so, think about this for a moment. Just think about this for a moment. If a box is at rest, it will remain at rest unless an external force acts on the box. In other words, if there is no external influence on the box, naturally it prefers to be at rest. What does that mean? It means that for the state of motion to change, for the state of motion of a system to actually change requires an external influence, requires an external force. So we can actually get two things from this statement. One, ex external influences or forces brings about motion. Very crucial. In other words, we can define a force as an external influence that will cause a system to change its state of motion. Two, 
naturally object resists changes in motion. Let me say that again. Naturally, objects are reluctant to change their state of motion. What I mean by that is, if an object is at rest, it prefers to remain at rest. And if an object is in motion, it prefers to continue to be in motion unless an external force comes along and changes things. That natural resistance, that natural reluctance of a system or an object to a change in its state of motion is what we call inertia. Let me say that again. The resistance an object naturally poses to the change in its state of motion is what we call inertia. This explains why Newton's first law of motion is also called the law of inertia. It is also called the law of inertia. Bert, what really is inertia? Inertia, in simple terms, is the resistance or reluctance of an object to naturally change its state of motion. It is very easy for you to observe your inertia. For example, if you are seated in a car that is not moving and you are a passenger, especially when your seatbelt is not put on. As a matter of fact, the reason you wear seatbelts is not because the law asks you to wear seatbelts, it's because physics forces you to wear seatbelts. That's how powerful physics is. Because without seatbelts, your inertia can kill you. Let me explain how. If a car is moving, you are also moving with the car because you are part and parcel of what? The system. The moving system is you, the car, and all the passengers in the car. So if the car is moving, you are also moving. Now if the car suddenly stops, let's say that in a dead traffic where the car in front of you suddenly stops, then you are bound to suddenly stop as well. What do you notice? you will jake forward why do you jake forward until you are stopped by your seat belt it's because initially you are moving the car stops naturally you want to keep on moving so you continue moving until you are stopped by your seat belt so your inertia keeps you moving so without your seat belt bam you hit the frontal bonnet and that may cause some serious injury so it is very important that you wear seat belts. Really not because the law in California tells you to wear seat belts, because physics forces you to wear seat belts. Your inertia can kill you. Understand that. Another typical example is if you are sitting in a car that is not moving and suddenly it starts moving, what happens? You jerk backwards. Why do you jerk backwards? Because you want to keep on staying at rest. You want to remain at rest. You don't want to change your state of motion. Your, your initial state of motion was that you were not moving, you were at rest. Then the car started moving. Zoom! What happens? Your body resists moving forward. That resistance is what we call inertia. Now understand this. The greater your mass, the greater your inertia. The smaller your mass, the smaller your inertia. You see, as your mass increases, it gets increasingly difficult for you to get up and do things. Because the more mass you have, the more inertia you have. Uh, and that's why it's not just for you to be flexible, it's for all the reason to keep your mass within a certain limit. Now we are going to talk more about this in the later on chapters, but there is a huge difference between what you call weight, which is what you actually mean is mass, than what is weight itself. Now I'm going to explain this to you in a different you know, lesson, but keep that in mind. So essentially, we can use your inertia to define your mass. Mass is a measure of an object's inertia. In other words, we know that a, big, a bigger mass has a bigger inertia and a smaller mass has a smaller inertia. Therefore, it's just logical for 
for us to define mass as a measure of an object's inertia. Now, Newton himself defined mass as the quantity of matter in an object. The quantity of matter in an object. The unit of measure of mass is the kilogram. Let me say that again. The unit of measure of mass is the kilogram. Now here is the most important property of mass. Mass is an intrinsic property of a system. Mass is an intrinsic property of a body. You see, the mass of an object is the same under all conditions, irrespective of the location of that object. For example, if you are in California and you move to Alabama, your mass remains the same. If you decide and you go to China, your mass stays the same. Now, even if you decide and you fly to the moon, your mass remains the same. It doesn't change. No matter where you are in the universe. Understand that. On the other hand, your weight changes. Your weight in California is slightly different from your weight in Alabama. Slightly different from your weight in Russia. Slightly different from your weight in Africa. So your weight changes with locations. If you really want to lose weight. So there is a huge difference between weight and mass. Weight is the gravitational pull of the earth on you. Your mass is the quantity of matter on you. Weight is a force measured in Newton. Mass is not a force and measured in kilograms. Your weight changes as you move, as your location changes, but your mass remains the same no matter where you are. So fundamentally, weight and mass are two different things. So maybe you have to change your vocabulary. Instead of using the word weight, which you actually mean mass, begin to use the word mass in the place of weight.